Good morning. It's Wednesday, January the 6th, 2016. I'm Michael Farr from Farr Miller in Washington, in Washington, D.C., where we're having a rocky start for Wall Street's opening, not only this year, but certainly again this morning. I was on the nightly business report last night, and I suggested that the sky was not falling, that there were reasons for a shift in reallocation of risk uh, in the markets as the Fed was pulling back, as the promise of easy cash was going away, the high-flying stocks like Netflix and Tesla would uh, probably not be doing as well, I've been saying that for a while, and that the large dividend-paying stocks with solid balance sheets that did not do well last year really might be places to invest for this year. Well, my promises of the sky not falling uh, aren't looking very good this morning uh, for two reasons. It's not so much a continuation of new economic weak data, but rather uh, two kind of other issues. One, uh, North Korea says that they tested a, a nuclear device last night and, and that it was a hydrogen bomb. A hydrogen bomb is a combination kind of a bomb that's much more powerful than an atomic bomb. And yet the tremors in 5.1 on the Richter scale uh, don't show evidence of a hydrogen bomb. And in fact, the, those tremors were less and lower than the previous bomb that uh, was detonated by North Korea. Um, this is not known as the most honest of governments out there. It's not a good thing, no matter uh, any way you see it, but it's certainly a surprise to markets as they, as uh, North Korea, not a friendly nation to anyone, um, is suggesting and, and proving that they have some capacity uh, and, in, and perhaps an advancing capacity towards uh, uh, some sort of nuclear uh, potential. Uh, what we saw out of China overnight was uh, the Chinese government let the yuan, which is the uh, Chinese currency, fluctuate and basically weaken by 22 basis points, so almost a quarter of 1% to allow that to weaken. Now, when your currency weakens, uh, it makes your stuff cheaper for everybody else to buy. Easiest way to think about it. We saw, we will see, and we've begun to see, but we will see other emerging markets lower their currencies, get those currencies lower to make their stuff competitive with China stuff in emerging markets because they have to compete. In the U.S., we saw the dollar strengthen. We're at a dollar uh, seven right now to the euro, and I believe that we're on our way to parity this year. The 10 year Treasury, 2.18%. The Dow has opened uh, very uh, much in the red, down uh, 270 points, maybe going a little bit lower here. The S&P 500 down 28, 29, 30 points. Uh, this, uh, these are significant drops as the Dow Jones Industrial Average is moving towards 16,900, no longer in the 17,000s, and the S&P 500 is now below uh, 2,000, back in the 1,900 range. So what does it mean? It, to me, means that we are seeing uh, some other kind of compounding effects and noises of recent weakness. Uh, we've said for some time that economic data has been uh, weak in the U.S. It's, we've seen some recovery. We've seen improvements in employment. We've seen continued consumer spending. And we certainly have headwinds out there all balanced with a Fed that seems to be retracting, uh, increasing their rates a little bit. Kind of looks to us like the U.S. markets could have maybe a 5% uh, year in front of them, which, you know, given current levels, isn't bad. Markets get to rest. They've been on a pretty good tear for the past four or five, six years. 2015 was not a particularly strong year for the S&P or the Dow. We may have another resting year. Uh, but what we are seeing that's interesting to me right now is a shift in sentiment. And we are, are hearing the choruses of those who have been bearish giggle. Uh, they are gleeful. See, I told you the sky would fall. See, I told you everything was horrible. 
and you're going to hear them shouting a little bit more loudly that everything's horrible. It's easy to get caught up, and one of the reasons I wanted to come to you this morning, it's very easy to get caught up in the emotion du jour. I think it's always somehow easier, unfortunately, when it's really negative. You seem a lot wiser when you're dour than when you're ebullient. Uh, that's, that's a shame. It's more fun to be ebullient, I promise. But uh, you get taken very seriously when you're dour. So uh, I, I'm always uh, worried. I'm always very cautious about the markets, as our long-term readers and viewers and clients know. Uh, but the thing that you have to do in a market environment like this is look to your data and look to your discipline. Continue to do your research and remember your long-term goals. Warren Buffett's not panicking. Nobody's getting overly emotional about this who's done this for too long. So we want to make rational, dispassionate decisions. We want to do the right things for our clients. And we don't want to make some silly mistake in the short term because of some you know, insightful thing that someone recently said uh, that's probably going to make them feel better and serve their purposes. We want to look to our goals, our data, and our research. So I posted my top uh, 10 stocks for 2016. I continue to like them. I might be buying them a little bit less expensively today. My clip from the Nightly Business Report will be on our website and we'll send that out a little bit later in tweets and blasts and other things that we do in social media around here. Uh, and we will also be uh, releasing our weekly market commentary for today where we give you some further insights into what we think is going on. Hang in there. It's going to be a tough day, but we've had tough days before. Uh, we will get through this together. If you need a little help or hand-holding and we can do that for you, give us a call. In Washington, D.C., hoping you hang in there and stay warm, I'm Michael Farr.